Welcome to another episode of the Underground Bunker Podcast, and the Underground Bunker is so happy to welcome Mr. Mark Bunker, wise beard man, to the podcast. How you doing, Mark? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me back again. Oh, well, we always love talking to you about things going on in Scientology in general and Clearwater in particular. I didn't have anything, uh, any big agenda today. I'm just uh, still recovering from the end of the Danny Masterson trial and trying to find out what else is going on in Scientology. I thought I'd just check in with you and uh, what's happening out there in the spiritual home of the Church of Scientology. Oh, things are hopping, I tell you. Uh, it, it's been an interesting time. Uh, I am, uh, by the way, I've got a cat right here playing with a cat toy right now. So if you hear some noise in the background, <laughs> that's what's going on. Um, we, we've got uh, a lot of stuff happening here. Uh, I am now the vice mayor. Uh, this right. is a Congratulations, vice mayor Bunker. <laughs> this is a, cere a ceremonial position uh, where... Uh, if the mayor is not available, uh, I, I would uh, be cutting ribbons and giving speeches and things like that. Uh, and it's been uh, very interesting, a lot of fun. Uh, and, and I'm I'm happy to have a chance to step up and uh, be a more active participant. But we've got, uh, you know, we've got Scientology going on all around us. The city doesn't seem to be... Uh, uh, if City Hall doesn't seem to be as concerned as I am, <laughs> but uh, I continue to uh, point out exactly what's happening in the city. Uh, one of the big things that's come up recently, and uh, and I know you you at least saw an article about this. Uh, we, we've been talking about a land swap with Scientology uh, for for years now, and. It looks like it's falling apart, thank heavens. I'm, I'm, I'm going to push to uh, uh, make sure that uh, we don't allow David Miscavige to win. Because as I'm sure most of your followers are aware, um, Miscavige back in, in 2017 decided to secretly buy up all the remaining property downtown. And they left it, uh, left those buildings empty ever since then to thwart our efforts to uh, redevelop downtown. Um, and, and just to point out, the reason that he went on that buying spree, and, and let's give Tracy McManus her due, because she's the one that uncovered this at the Tampa Bay Times. And it was accomplished by the use of Scientologists, wealthy Scientologists buying the parcel, so it didn't look like it was the Church of Scientology. But it's important to point out that the reason why David Miscavige had these wealthy Scientologists snapping up parcels was he was so angry that the city would not sell to him this one little piece of land. It's just like the size of half of a parking lot, and it's right behind the Fort Harrison Hotel, right next to the Oak Cove, and uh, uh, he wants that little piece of land so bad. And yes. when he couldn't get it, he his revenge was to buy up all this land and take it out of the clutches of anybody else and keep try to keep the city from developing. Mark, do you have a theory why he wants that little piece of land so bad? Well, uh, I mean, it's leverage for one. He, he uh, Buying up all the property is leverage. Uh, he says that he wants that piece of property for a swimming pool for the Oak Knoll uh, uh, condos. It's like, oh, okay, sure, I believe you. I, I think it's really, they, they don't want people that close to their property because it's right right next to uh, the Fort Harrison. Um, but, you know, wh whatever the reason, uh, we don't want them to have it. At least I don't. And the... Uh, Clearwater Marine Aquarium, which uh, were the owners of that property, definitely did not want Scientology to get their hands on this property. Because back in um, 2016, 2017, the aquarium wanted to move part of their, um, uh, you know, their, their functions uh, to our downtown, which would have been the one thing that would have kickstarted 
uh, a rebirth of our downtown after 50 years of Scientology making the area radioactive. Well, Miss Cabbage didn't want to have anybody wandering around his neighborhood. Uh, all those prying eyes, uh, seeing what Miss Cabbage may be up to, possibly witnessing somebody trying to escape from the Sea Org. Um, so he uh, went about uh, destroying the um, uh, aquarium's uh, efforts to actually build there. Yeah. And when they finally said, okay, we, uh, we give up, um, they sold the property to the city expressly uh, to keep it out of Scientology's hands. Yeah, why, why, why reward Scientology by giving them exactly what they wanted after they destroyed the aquarium's plans? Of course the aquarium didn't want to sell to Dave. And I also like to point out that that little piece of property is not just behind the Fort Harrison Hotel, but right behind the cabanas where Lisa McPherson spent her last 17 days. And I just, I just know he doesn't want people snooping around there at all. Yeah, and if you know if we build uh, apartments uh, on that property, um, there'd be a nice view right down there uh, into the cabanas. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, he this is something that he wants desperately to to stop. Um, so uh, this master plan was put in place to uh, screw us over uh, and and hold the downtown hostage uh, so we would succumb uh, and. When uh, the last council back in 2018 said, no, we're not, we're not going to sell that to you, Ms. Cabbage said, all right, I'll wait till the next council. And, uh, and then he got me. Um, so I, I, hope, <laughs> I hope we can continue that pattern of, uh, you know, not giving him what he wants. Um, we had a, a new city manager come in uh, this past year, and he talked a, a good game. Uh, everyone that we interviewed for the position, uh, I grilled on Scientology, and he had done his homework. He had watched uh, Going Clear and Leah Remini's show and read a bunch of the books. So he understood what Scientology was. And I, I thought, you know, we're, we're going to be pretty safe uh, hiring this guy. But then it turned out that he uh, became uh, uh, Miss Cavage's uh, uh, buddy. Um, uh, they're talking constantly. And he was trying to manage this swap. Uh, so, and, and, and it, this was not done maliciously or because he wanted to be a pawn in Miss Cabbage's uh, operation. It was because he really thought, well, this is a way to move the city forward. To well, get you know, I, I mean, I can imagine uh, a good city manager uh, developing a decent relationship with Scientology so that there's communication, but what, what it, uh, from the outside, what it looked like, uh, became a problem was that he was having all these communications with Scientology, but he wasn't telling you guys about it. I mean, that that's, that's terrible. Yeah. Yeah. There, there were, there were some things that we'd hear about and other things that we didn't. Um, the, uh, the biggest frustration was uh, when Scientology sabotaged a, um, an affordable housing project that we had approved. And we had been working on that for several years. Uh, and, you know, every, there were a lot of, uh, of hurdles that had to be overcome in this because uh, it was approved and then COVID hits. Uh, and cost of construction goes through the roof. So we, we continued to give them more funding to make sure this happened and stayed on track. Uh, but Miss Cabbage said, yeah, I'd really rather you didn't do that. We'd like to put an L. Ron Hubbard Museum there. Uh, so they started calling and pestering the developer, even though he had everything, you know, locked in. And they pestered him so much 
that he finally threw up his hands and said, well, the city obviously doesn't know what they want to do. Um, and unbeknownst to us, uh, our, our new city manager had been trying to ease uh, Scientology's um, ability to make this transfer. And, you know, our city manager said, well, uh, you know, this is going to work out well for us. They're still going to have the, the, the project here. Uh, Scientology is going to give them some extra money for the project. Uh, it's going to go into a different part of the neighborhood. But uh, what, what happened is the money that they had from the federal government and the state government, that was tied to that particular lot. And it didn't move with the project. So Cabbage yeah. just essentially scared this guy out of town. He left completely. And when we found this out, I mean, I was livid. Um, and, you know, so were the rest of the council. They weren't happy about this at all, really. Um, so uh, with uh, a few um, miscommunications like this over the one year that our city manager was here, uh, the council decided to fire the guy. And uh, we we uh, now have uh, uh, our former assistant uh, city manager uh, has assumed the position and, and she's good. She She's really um, dedicated and, and uh, detail oriented as keeping us informed on everything. Right. Uh, so Miss Cabbage is, is still uh, desiring this land swap and it's something that I think the majority of the people on the council at least from listening or reading Tracy's last article because we can't talk among ourselves they, all right unless it's in an open meeting we can't discuss any of these subjects at all so we have to uh, find out <laughs> through through the Tampa Bay Times uh, that, uh, you know, none of the other council members are thrilled about Miscavige getting this land swap done. Um, it hasn't been canceled entirely yet. Uh, that's still going to come before us, but uh, we're leaning toward uh, making sure that Miscavige does not win, that he does well, not uh, get this property. And another thing uh, um, about that story you know, the, the the gist of Tracy's big blockbuster investigation from a couple of years ago, she had found out that there had been this buying spree. But again, they were Scientologists that had bought these parcels, not the Church of Scientology. And so Scientology made this, you know, all these statements about how we have nothing to do with that, right? Which was not really believable. But... Um, now we find out in this swap that's being proposed, it the what Scientology says they're willing to give up are a couple of these properties that the Scientologists bought. So yeah. once again, it's confirmation of what Tracy had discovered that of course these wealthy Scientologists went on this buying spree at the behest of David Miscavige and David yeah. Miscavige can tell them what to do with the land today. So uh, I just thought that I just love seeing uh, her vindicated that way because, you know, same thing kind of happened out here in Los Angeles during this trial is um, I work with some great journalists out here who are constantly struggling with uh, lies that their bosses are being told by Scientology. And we have to keep, you know, doing what we can to help educate these editors and producers. And it's like, look, you're being lied to. Um, and it can make it tough for, for journalists that are just trying to get the real story out. So it, I just think it's great that there was another layer of confirmation for Tracy's investigations. Yeah. Looking back at the very first article she wrote back in 2017, though, it seemed like Miscavige at that point was pretty much admitting it. He was uh, proudly saying, well, this is all part of his master plan to redevelop the downtown uh, in exchange for this piece of property. Um, but, and, and Scientology did buy uh, uh, some of the land themselves. There was uh, uh, one block that 
Scientology purchased that Miscavige and Tom Cruise were going to turn into a movie theater and a nightclub and make it an entertainment complex. Uh, but the majority of it, yeah, were, were individual Scientologists using their money. Right. Uh, purchase these buildings uh, and then Miscavige can just snap his fingers and um, fill them up if uh, he wants to. Uh, thing is, he doesn't want to because he's had the ability to do that now since 2017 and he hasn't budged a bit. Yeah. There is work on supposedly three properties on Cleveland Street right now that he is touting. Oh, look at the beautiful work we're going to do restoring these three buildings. Well, I finally see some work being done on one um, that's an old telephone company building. I uh, needed a lot of repairs to it. So they are slowly working on that. And I've seen the designs for another one that used to be the old Woolworths. And Scientology is incredibly, or Miss Cabbage is incredibly thrilled that he's going to restore it to its original glory with the uh, Woolworth sign out front, the vintage sign. And you go, well, well, that's nice if there was a Woolworth in there, but isn't it going to be kind of confusing? <laughs> you got to, uh, you know, some Mark, other... Mark, it's gonna, it, Mark, it's going to be an ideal Woolworth. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. Uh, yeah, it, 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 it's... Um, it's rather sad and pathetic to see, uh, and it's shameful that the city is is being held hostage. But they have ruined the downtown for close to fifty years now. Okay, but you, I mean, you are making progress, right? I mean, there's this new amphitheater that's going to be opening up pretty soon, and and uh... right. right. In order to counteract Miss Cabbage's, uh, you know. Uh, nuclear radiation uh, effect on the downtown. We've uh, spent uh, $85 uh, million dollars building, uh, revamping our Coachman Park and building a 4,000-seat uh, amphitheater, and that's opening in three weeks. So that's pretty exciting. And it looks beautiful, by the way. I, I took a tour of it in progress a, a couple of months ago, and uh, in the next a week or so, I'm I'm going to have a chance to uh, take a tour uh, to see you know how close we are to our finished uh, uh, goal, and we've been on time and on budget, which is pretty damn remarkable in a huge project like this. Uh, so there's going to be a week's worth of festivities that Miscavige is not, as far as I know, been invited to, uh, but we're we're going to have. Uh, 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 concerts uh, each night throughout the park and at the at the amphitheater leading up to the 4th of July where we're going to have uh, the Florida Symphony Orchestra doing a free concert for the folks here and the biggest uh, fireworks display that we've ever done in Clearwater. So it'll be a nice way to, to kick it off and bring some life back downtown and we've got uh, uh, another developer, because we have done this with the park, he said, I want in on this too. So they're building some apartments um, uh, right there on the bluffs as well. So we're going to have people living and working and playing downtown. And that's what we really need to counteract Scientology's impact. Um, and there's another developer who um, also uh, has said he wants to come into the neighborhood as well. So I think we're making good progress in, in actually overcoming um, Miscavige's obstacles. But he is going to continue to try to thwart uh, our every effort. Uh, and, and that is a, a frustrating thing. I, I went to the FBI again recently and said, listen, this is racketeering. Uh, and they they say to me, you know, unless uh, you've got uh, any evidence of an actual crime, we can't do anything. We, we have to have somebody tell us, somebody who left recently, is, who can tell us, you go to this office and go check that desk drawer and you're going to find the evidence you need that, that shows that Miss Cabbage, you know, set up this whole thing. Without that, we can't go to the judge and get a, a, a warrant for a, 
uh, for a, a you know a search warrant, um, and that is so frustrating. And I tried talking to our state attorney to say, hey, "Listen, can we can we do a grand uh, uh, what is it a grand jury investigation so we, we can do some exploring and see if there's a reason to go in there?" Uh, the state attorney won't talk to me, and, and this is the same thing that has been happening. Ever since Scientology came to town, uh, I mean, I, I I sat down with Ray Emmons, who was the police lieutenant who was in charge of investigating Scientology for twenty years when they first came to town and tried to take it over. And in the interview he gave me back in two thousand, he said we turned to the state authorities, the federal authorities. Everybody said, "Are they going to come after me?" Uh, it's a religion. Yeah. And Nothing's changed, really. Um, you know, and the what, what you described, uh, that that is exactly what happened in 1977, is that they had somebody who was on the inside who came out, Michael Meisner, and he could tell them exactly in what cabinets you're going to find particular pieces of evidence. And so when the FBI raided then in D.C., but mo- ma- mainly in Los Angeles, they they had a subpoena that listed rooms so that they went to particular rooms, went into particular cabinets, and they found the pieces of evidence that Michael Meisner told them they were going to find there. People often don't understand that that law enforcement needs that kind of specificity. And it's difficult for them that sometimes people come out and they spend 15 or 20 years before they decide, hey, maybe I should say something. So uh, it it is frustrating. Right. And, and, I believe that if we had a, a, a Michael Meisner uh, right now, the FBI would jump at it. They'd be happy to do something about this. Uh, their hands are tied, um, unfortunately. Uh, so it's up to us to just kind of fight back. And, and what we've been doing, you and, and everyone else who's been reporting on Scientology over the decades, is whittling away, getting the truth out there. Uh, and making it more difficult for Scientology to re- recruit new members. Well, but you know, it's, it's, they've got those wealthy uh, whales. That, they got wealthy uh, whales, but it's a smaller thing now, you know, Mark. I mean, it's a smaller organization. I don't think they have the resources they did before. So um, I think the, you know, my job is just to keep an eye on them. But people like you are actually making, you know, efforts against them. And I, I think it's becoming, uh, you know, I think I think it's having its effect. I think you know Scientology just doesn't have the resources it did before, but they still have a ton of money. They have so much money, Mark. It's incredible. <laughs> yep. Well, listen. There's a couple of there's a couple of things that happen. I want to get to real quickly, and then I want to ask you some more about the um, situation there. But um, we read recently that you were targeted by someone in a bizarre series of uh, threats. Uh, my understanding is that this gentleman has some court dates coming up, and so you would rather wait until he gets his chance to go through the criminal justice system before we go into detail about that. Is that right? Yeah, I'd rather not uh, risk um, making this uh, uh, something that would allow him to escape any type of justice if we say, ah, oh, yeah, he's going around and playing all these uh, death threats. So, uh, I mean, the the death threats are, are, you know, especially one of them where he he threatens to cut my throat, cut my head off and and kill me, which, uh, you know, very, very troubling. Now, uh, he's he's got a court date, um, I think, on the 19th, um, and I probably won't be going to that. but there's a pretrial hearing at that point, and we'll we'll see where it goes from there. Um, you know, in, in this climate where where politicians, especially, are, are being assaulted and, and, and under attack, um, I I didn't think it was worth taking a risk. And and in one interview, I said something like that, where especially if they're, you know, making a death threat against a politician, I didn't mean that we're, uh, uh, you know, it, it's uh, really far worse if they 
if they uh, uh, attack a politician rather than anybody else. Uh, I was just talking about the the fact that we're seeing, you know, Nancy. Uh, um, oh, for God's sakes, what can Nancy I Pelosi's think of? husband. Yeah, Nancy Pelosi's husband, yeah, mm -hmm. and and situations like that that have been popping up left and right. Um, anyway, well, I'm, we'll, I'm, we'll I'm glad. I'm glad they took it seriously, and uh, like I said, we'll we'll revisit that in more detail once this gentleman has had a chance to have his day in court. Yeah. Um, the other thing um, that's uh, news out of your area is just this terrible news about Mike Rinder. Um, Mike had let me in a little bit early about that he was going through some serious things, and they were checking it out, and they weren't sure yet, and then Christy Colbrand put up the post to explain he has advanced esophageal cancer, but they uh, have identified uh, what's driving it, this mutation in his blood. And so that's uh, very good news and they can target the treatment. Um, I, you know, I'm just devastated. He has been such a great friend. He's been so supportive. Uh, he's done some things that I, I've never really been able to talk about. Um, you know, you must've been, just stunned by the news as well. I was, and there's been so much going on that I didn't really hear the news un, un, fully until yesterday. Oh, wow. Um, I, I saw a headline that you sent in an email. I, I knew that he was battling something, but I, I, I didn't go to have a chance to go to Mike's website until yesterday uh, and read um, all about it and do some research on what he's battling and um, see what a uh, you know tough road it is for him um, so I I sent him a message uh, last night talking about the fact that you know I can't believe I'm wiping away tears uh, if you know the, back in 2000 if i had been told you know you, you you're going to be wiping away tears at the thought of mike render being sick right uh, it, it, it's uh, it's just unfathomable actually when when he was still the head of the office of special affairs and trying to uh destroy bob minton um trying to get me arrested having me followed everywhere and um but it was Mike Rinder who um, allowed me to really change my perspective on Scientologists while he was still in. Because working at the Lisa McPherson Trust um, back then with Stacy Brooks, who uh, had been a member for a long time and knew Mike Rinder, I would say something about, you know, Mike being evil. And she'd go, no, actually, he's a really nice guy. And I'd go, what? Um, and she explained to me how, you know, it's not, uh, you know, the Scientologists are, are, are good, decent people who want to save the planet. It's, uh, it's the organization that, that Hubbard put together and the mindset that they, they put you into where you know whatever you do to strike an effective blow for to protect Scientology, it's got to be done, um, and and that was a, a big shift for me to not blame the Scientologists who would come and confront me in the streets uh, and say horrible things to me, because uh, I, I I always uh, assume that they're good people. Um, and that one day they'll leave, and like Mike Render, uh, we can become friends. And he has become a friend. Uh, uh, and um, you know, I, I I wish him the best. I'm so thrilled that uh, he's got the the money coming in now from donations to uh, be uh, getting this um, this treatment that is very promising. He, he says he's already feeling the benefits from it. That's great. Um, I had a, a friend uh, more than a decade ago who battled cancer, and she was given a 5% chance of surviving. 
and she kicked it in the ass and she's wow. been going strong. So, um, you know, I, I'm hoping that he has great results too, because there are very few people on the planet who <laughs> have had the ability to come out from the highest ranks and explain to people what Scientology is yeah. and how they operate and explain that, um, you know, it's the organization that's the problem. So, yeah. <laughs> I can't oh, I, know, I, don't, I, I feel it too, man. I and I I don't want to be cryptic. I'll I'll go ahead and give a, a general description of what he did for me. Um, you know, Scientology doesn't have the guts to confront me directly. They never answer my requests for uh, you know, comment. They never respond to me if they have an issue with a story. What they do is they go after my family members and they try to intimidate them, they try to run big complex operations against them. In particular, they tend to target my wife. And at one point, they were running this crazy elaborate operation to try to freak out my wife's bosses. Because, the you know, you know how it works. If they can freak out the bosses, they'll fire her. And that'll hurt me. And um, Mike has been particularly helpful during those periods because he goes through the same thing, too. And, of course, he helped run that kind of thing when he was at OSA. So we would talk about it. And then on his own, he wrote this really great letter to my wife's bosses explaining, look, this is the Church of Scientology. This is why they're doing this. This is why they're using these methods. And it was really helpful. It, you know, her bosses realized, OK, we, we can handle this. This is not, not a big deal. So I'm just so indebted to Mike Rinder. He didn't have to do that. He didn't ask for anything in return. He knew that we were, you know, going through a difficult, scary period, and he wanted to lend his help. So that's the kind of thing Mike Rinder does that he doesn't, you know, go public about. I, I know he's done that for other people as well. Yeah. And um, so, uh, yeah, it's, it's – um, I think a lot of us are just really stunned right now. But you know, again, Christy de described some things I think that lead me to be hopeful. And uh, we'll just all be rooting for him and supporting him. So, um, yeah, it, at Mike's website, which is MikeRindersBlog.org, um, there's a donate button. Please, if you've got a few dollars, go over there and help them out because he's got some expensive treatments. But um, I'm glad to hear you've already heard that they're doing uh, they're helping him. That's great. Yeah, uh, so the the overwhelming support that he's seeing from people, uh, I think, has been uh, greatly uplifting, and the money has uh, certainly eased a lot of fears uh, that uh, at least uh, this first round of of therapy um, is covered. Um, so. I, I, I wish him all the best. I mean, he, you know, he helped me get elected, for God's sakes. He, he uh, uh, would come to my events. He, he uh, endorsed me. Um, and he and Leah Remini uh, were critical in me um, getting onto the city council. So I, I, I certainly appreciate that as well. Um, it's going to be interesting when I run for re-election in this uh, coming year uh, to see uh, what's going to be thrown at me this time. Uh, it's the first time uh, no one took me seriously. And um, no one other than one candidate, uh, Alicio Santana, who uh, um, was denouncing me for taking on Scientology, Everybody else just, you know, tried to avoid uh, the topic completely. Uh, I don't think that's going to be the case this time. I, I think they're going to be gunning for me, especially since I, I pissed off a lot of the establishment. Um, we, we have a situation where, uh, you know, most, I think it's probably the, the case in most cities that uh, 
there's the power to elite, the, the folks with the money, the developers, the business people, they, they pretty much have run the show. Uh, and uh, the little guy <laughs> really has a hard time going up against that. Well, you know, I and, and Kathleen Beckman, who was uh, elected at the same time I was, we, we, we've kind of changed the balance. And uh, that has freaked out a lot of people. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, uh, you know, we, we, uh, we've had a little chaos here lately because, um, our mayor, uh, resigned in the middle of a meeting because a couple of votes didn't go his way. And, and mayor Hibbard, I like, and I admire, um, I, I was disappointed that he, he, uh, decided to, uh, to do what he did and then go on a nationwide uh, campaign on Fox News and everywhere uh, denouncing us. Um, but we are, uh, we are forging ahead and we're getting what we want to get done, done. So with uh, uh, Mayor Hibbert going around and uh, spreading his thoughts about uh, how uh, how we are behaving uh that's uh, sunk in to a lot of people uh so mm -hmm. we'll we'll go to a meeting somewhere and people will be asking about the 90 million dollar city hall we're building for ourselves and we're not we're not um but once you go on fox news and say oh these uh these politicians are they're they're uh spending outrageously well, that's the message that's going to stick with you. Um, we are voting on a city hall, um, uh, which the mayor didn't want a new city hall at all. Uh, not not to bore you to tears with all this. It, you know, back uh, around 2017, we left the old city hall, put $30 million aside uh, to build a new one. And then we've, you know, fumfered around so much that uh, no one has been able to make a decision. Well, we finally made a decision. Let's do it. Yeah. Uh, and um, the mayor wanted to just take over a, a library on the beach and, and make that our offices. And we, why should we have a beautiful view uh, at the park when that, that building really should be for the public? Right. Um, anyway, so... Um, there's issues like that that we're, uh, we've been dealing with. Uh, I, I, but I have to say that um, if people think that I'm a, um, a, a one position uh, candidate or a politician. I'm only concerned about Scientology. And, and I take every opportunity I can to, to bring up Scientology and talk about how we need to, you know, take them on. Uh, but uh, I have found it incredibly uh, satisfying to be able to help people on, on a range of issues, whether, you know, it, they're the women's clinic, they're protesters that were um, making uh, life miserable for, for women coming into the clinic. And I helped them get a buffer zone put in place so that, uh, um, you know, they'd have a little bit of uh, you know, peace, um, and, and uh, you know, various things like that. I, I, I've been thrilled to help with. Well, one of the big issues was um, revamping uh, a very busy street in our city, Drew Street, which is uh, one of the main thoroughfares uh, from the the highway down to the beach. And there is a particular stretch of this street that uh, becomes a, a neighborhood. A lot of it is industrial or business, and, and then we get into a, a neighborhood where the street is too narrow. People are speeding through there. There've been accidents, there's been injuries, there's been a fatality. Uh, cars are, are smashing into homes. It, it's, it, it's been a nightmare for these people, and they've been begging for seven years for us to do something about that. Uh, and we finally did. We finally said, okay, we're, we're making some changes to the street now. We approved it. 
and against the uh, wishes of our former Mayor Hibbert, who was very, very upset about this, um, we uh, voted to help the neighborhood. A neighborhood, by the way, which has a lot of Scientologists in it. Uh, on, we had a neighborhood's day where we uh, would go around to all the neighborhoods to, to say hi. And, um, and I went to this one neighborhood where they had signs up, save Drew Street. And I said, well, you'll be happy to know that we're going to do this. We're going to get this done for you. And as I'm explaining that to one woman, uh, suddenly she's grabbed by the arm and yanked away from me. Uh, and it turns out that this is a primarily Scientologist neighborhood. And, and the word got around that there's an SP here and you cannot talk to him. Well, uh, you know, I want them to know we still got Drew Street done for you. Okay? Well, and I want, I want to thank you for writing up that encounter for the underground bunker. That was a wonderful piece. Everyone loved it. pretty amazing. Everyone loved your observations about Scientology pie, for example, pecan yeah. pie. Um, at, at any rate, uh, one of the one of the things that happened then, because uh, the mayor was so upset about that vote and the city hall vote that he quit. Um, and once we got this approved, we we found out that the mayor and and Amplify Clearwater, the business community, went behind our backs and talk to a state senator, um, Senator Hooper. And at the last moment, he put some, uh, some wording into the state budget that delayed this project. Oh. And we were furious about this. Um, so we had a, a, a meeting on it um, just this, you know, just uh, one or two meetings ago where, um, they wanted to slow down and do another study and let's spend $3 million to restrike the street and, and we'll, we'll test it out first before we actually do it. And to me, this was just delaying it to derail it. Uh, they wanted to make sure that, uh, uh, okay, this never happens. We'll, we'll slow it down until we can get these troublemakers kicked off the council We'll get a couple more like-minded people on there to make sure that, you know, cars still zoom past there at 40, 50 miles an hour. Um, thankfully, and, oh, and I was furious about this because Monday it was decided we're, we're, we're going to, you know, spend the money to do this. Uh, and, and I ranted and raved about uh, Amplify Clearwater uh, and their uh, involvement in this. So Amplify Clearwater is the new name for the Chamber of Commerce and Scientology is a partner in this. So I'll go to these Amplify events and there'll be a Scientology table right up front with Pat Hardy and all the other uh, big wigs um, and their proud partners. Um, and at one of the meetings recently, uh, uh, somebody else uh, after the meeting came up, well, can't you do something about Scientology being here? Okay. <laughs> you know, so, well, I mean, they're, they're members, but I, I went up to talk to the woman who's in charge of Amplify afterwards. Yeah, people are kind of questioning why they're, uh, why they're part of this since they're, they're not a business. And uh, they, more than anyone, have harmed the downtown. Uh, well, you know, we have other religions that are par partners as well. Uh, yeah, I don't see them having tables here. Um, so uh, when Amplify went behind our backs, I was furious about this. And I said, listen, if you want to help downtown, it's not the Drew Street traffic slowing down a little bit that, that's the problem. It's Scientology buying up all these buildings and leaving them empty. And you've got the Scientologists in your organization. You, you should be able to go to them and say, listen, this is the number one thing we need to do to make our downtown successful. You've got to put building, you've got to put businesses in here. Why the hell aren't you doing that? Uh, and that uh, was, was going to be my mantra for uh, the next year at least. And it may still 
But we uh, we got a call today from our city manager saying uh, the Florida Department of Transportation is not allowing us to do that $3 million restriping. So we're going ahead and, and fixing up the street for the neighborhood. Oh, that's great news. Yeah, but um, I mean, it really pisses me off that uh, uh, Scientology can have such uh, a large impact. And this organization, which is expressly to, you know, to help the downtown prosper, uh, you know, the enemy is within. You know, you, you, you have to do something about that before anything else really changes. Uh, but no, that's not a message anyone wants to hear. Uh, Besides, so uh, I keep, uh, I keep uh, shouting it to the uh, to the heavens, and I have to say I I, I do amuse some of the people uh, on staff uh, because as I was going on about uh, Scientology and Amplify Clearwater, I looked over and there was our city attorney with the city clerk, and they were going. <laughs> I'm amazed that I, I managed to work Scientology into this conversation. Uh, but it was, uh, you know, uh, I thought a very crucial part of the conversation. Besides uh, uh, besides Pat Harney, does Ben Shaw come to those Amplify Clearwater? Yeah, I've seen Ben Shaw at, at some of the things. Uh, he wasn't at the, the last one that I went to. Um, but uh, I have uh, bumped into him a few times. Never says hi. Pat Harney won't say hi. You know, I'll go up and, you know, I'm the vice mayor. I, you know, I want to have good relationships with people. Uh, well, so they, uh, I'll say ben, hello and they just walk away from me. And Ben and, Shaw's star has been rising at the Underground Bunker. Really? Uh, thanks to you, because you have uh, supplied us those letters he wrote that uh, were so over the top. I mean, you know, uh, I think there's a whole genre of Scientology outrage that's so fun to read. Ben Shaw's letters, Jeffrey Riffer's court briefs, um, William Foreman and Matthew Hinks court briefs i mean the smelling salts they I, they must have to buy so many cases of smelling salts because they're just they just cannot believe it, how outraged they are about you know everything so anyway i thank you for those ben shaw i you know we need to get a newer photo of him so see what you can do on that okay Mark? okay uh, yeah yeah he he uh he's pretty gray now and he doesn't have the mustache anymore we, uh, you know i i miss that because uh jimmy finlay's uh, jimmy finlay's version of him uh is the version that i love the most um i i, I could never see him without thinking about the you know the double takes that finlayson would do in oral and hardy movies um so i you know i always enjoy seeing ben though He's not out and about as much as he used to be. I used to see him in the streets all the time, but uh, uh, every once in a while now, I'll, I'll, I'll spot him. Well, um, also going on in Clearwater on a legal side is this trafficking lawsuit, and there's a new development that just came in yesterday. Um, Baleska Paris and Gawain and Laura Baxter, who are all Australian residents, um, are suing Scientology, uh, saying that they were basically forced into the Sea Org as children, and then as adults were working on the free winds and were treated basically as slaves and, and just really treated horribly. And uh, Valeska also uh, alleges sexual assaults by other Sea Org members. So they're suing Scientology for trafficking, and so Scientology automatically, as always, brings up these contracts workers sign, not, not the billion year contract people, I, people always make that assumption, it has nothing to do with the billion year contract, but just normal employment contracts, service contracts you saw in science, Scientology have this arbitration clause and this uh, federal judge Thomas Barber ruled that even with these horrific allegations, the Valeska and the Baxters have to take their grievances to Scientology arbitration and they can't sue. So um, they, the attorneys for Valeska then filed a request to make an appeal. So you can't, there's no automatic appeal at this level. 
you have to ask for permission for an appeal. And just yesterday, Judge Barber ruled that, yes, they have identified some legal issues that could allow a, a, an early appeal that won't have to be a full-blown record uh, examination by the 11th Circuit. So that's good news for them. Yeah. They'll get a chance to they'll get a chance to at least have the 11th Circuit look at it. But of course, this is the same 11th Circuit that ruled for Scientology arbitration in the Garcia case. So they still have a a tough road ahead of them. Yeah, which is just complete insanity. Uh, how can how can you call this a justice system when uh, when decisions like this are made? I mean, you know, even, when, even the judge himself, even the judge himself was saying, you know, essentially this law is ridiculous, but I have to follow the law. I mean, that's basically what he was saying in his ruling, yeah. and that's why he's now allowing them appeal. It's like, okay, this needs to be cleared up. This legal question needs to be cleared up. So, and you saw him, didn't he strike you as a judge that seemed conscientious at least? Oh yeah. I mean, I, I, I you know, in the uh, courtroom, uh, the, the day he was uh, grilling the Scientologist attorney saying if they had a gun to their head, if there was a video of a gun to their head uh, 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 forcing them to sign, would that be duress? No, I, no, they, they, they still signed. Uh, so I thought, well, this guy understands the, <laughs> the pressure that's put on these people. Uh, and then, yeah, go figure. So that's why I was so stunned uh, that we had the conviction um, that you've been reporting on so, so well. Uh, Danny Masterson, uh, yes, I, I believe me, I was, I couldn't believe I was watching the man be handcuffed in court. It was just so surreal, Mark. You can imagine, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. I, I was talking to my friend Tori Christman a, a few days before that, and she was asking if I thought he'd be found guilty. I said, no way. You know, he's going to escape again. And, um, you know, and, and I was wrong, thank God. So, I mean, that, that gives us some hope. Um, there can yeah, be and some... I don't know if you saw, to, uh, also Judge Omedo ruled on this evidentiary hearing that these two attorneys, Tom Mesro and Sharon Applebaum, did leak that uh, discovery material to the Scientology. And, um, you know, DA, Deputy DA uh, Reinhold Mueller uh, really got to the point at the hearing and said, look, it's not just that they leaked material that uh, to a third party that wasn't entitled to it but to the very third party that's been harassing and intimidating these women you know i mean just incredible so uh i don't know it does even though it's really just about one man being put in prison for something he did 20 years ago it feels like it's such a good exposure of scientology and how it protected them all these years and how these women were were treated as that they, you know, tell, they were told that they were at fault for being victims. I think a lot about Scientology got exposed in this, and uh, I'm just hoping some other agencies are paying attention. Well, uh, it it would be nice. I, I I'm not holding out hope, but um, you know, it it it's uh, certainly comforting to know that some justice was done in this case. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I just, I mean, that I've, all, I've been operating on a theory. I knew that there was other interest. Well, first of all, there is this grand jury and, and Judge Omedo, I, she kind of slapped me on the wrist uh, myself a few weeks ago when I overheard them talking about it. And I reported that the grand jury is still going. Well, now in this new ruling, she says it outright that there's a grand jury and it's ongoing. So the information did eventually come out. But uh, I mean, that's interesting that that there's yeah. a, there's been a grand jury somewhere in Southern California operating since 2018 and looking at Scientology. Wow. OK, so, uh, you know, I have to take back everything I've said uh, uh, about the system because, um, you know, they they are interested. They are looking. We'll see if um, something if they come up with enough evidence to actually, uh, you know, do another raid and, you know, shut this uh, sucker down. 
Well, I, I, I agree with what you said earlier. You, you said you've talked to the FBI and that if if the conditions were right, they'd be very eager to do something. And I, I've yeah. had the same impression myself. I've talked to a few federal agents. I think they're very interested, but it needs to be a certain situation. Yeah, I've, I've wondered, though, if one of the things they've been waiting to see is what happens in this case. And that now there's there's a conviction you know, we know the grand jury has been looking at it for five years. Maybe now it's time for some other agencies to start bringing some charges. Because one of the features of this of the trial and the retrial was what sure sounds like obstruction to justice to me. I mean, you know, when the Church of Scientology is telling these women they can't go to the police and, uh, you know, they've got their private investigators out there doing stuff. I don't know. I I, I wonder if maybe now uh, we've reached an, a time when some other agencies might realize, OK, we've got a conviction. you got a guy in prison. He did commit these crimes. So now let's look at why Scientology worked so hard to keep it from getting here. Yeah. I hear you. Uh, 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 you know. I'm hoping for the best from that. What else is going on in Clearwater, Mark? Anything else we should know about? You know, I I, I can't think of anything offhand. Um, it, it seems like there may be something that's uh, tucked away here. Um, so we'll we'll have to uh, do another podcast uh, in the future when I. I come up with that. All right. Well, listen, I really appreciate, uh, you know, I I just have been so impressed. Uh, I know you're not just a one issue politician there in Clearwater. I know you care about the town and uh, I've seen the things that you've worked on. And I, I hope the people of Clearwater understand that, uh, you know, you've been a very valuable asset to that city and, um, I'm looking forward to that next campaign. It's going to be interesting, man. It, it sure is. But, you know, I, I do have um, some folks now who uh, are on my side who aren't just uh, Scientology interested people, uh, you know. So I, I think that's going to help. I, right. I think I can get some endorsements this time around, including I may get the endorsement of Alicio Santana, who is the fellow who attacked me last time. Wow. You know, I've been working with him on affordable housing stuff, and he said, "I, you know, I'm a fan now." So that's great. I, yeah, and everybody on Drew Street better come out and put put signs for Mark Bunker on their front lawns. Yeah, even that uh, Scientology block. I <laughs> want to see it. He's an SP, but he, he he got our street fixed. Thank you. Exactly. Gosh, man. <laughs> All right. Mark Bunker, thank you so much. And uh, we'll talk to you again soon. All right. Keep up the great work. Thank you. Bye.